see Blackboard prim primarily as an opportunity for conversations with faculty that we work with. So some of the, the goals for th this time together that we have are um, to, to show the Thayer folks how curricular computing works with Blackboard and to discuss how the Thayer folks now are, are working with Blackboard and to see what we can learn from each other, what best practices we can all take away. So here we have um, the what we are curricular computing and you'll see that in curricular computing the computing is bolder and bigger and one of the changes as we start to reinvent ourselves is that we're trying to move people's conception from when they think of curricular computing and they emphasize the computing to think of the curricular um, first that we're we're, we're educators and we're about learning and, and computing is simply the, the tool we use to um, increase increase the learning. So the emphasis on curricular. Um, one, one analogy could be a, a travel agent and how travel agents have changed in, in an age of Expedia orbits and Priceline. Um, nowadays, the values that travel agents bring are, are not booking the flights. Um, we're finding out the flights because we can all do that, but providing it, local knowledge, insights that you couldn't get anywhere, um, may, maybe organizing the, the experts that, that you'll meet or work with when, when you travel. Um, so, so certainly travel agents to survive had, have had to go up the, the, the knowledge scale um, just as we're trying to do. So an another or one way to think about what we're trying to do at curricular computing is to try to move what's been traditional in higher education in classes of say 30 or more of the the lecture class where the um, faculty member lectures to a bunch of students and students take notes as we are here um, to a model more like a, a seminar where um, in a seminar there are, are some attributes that we're trying to bring to the lecture class um, primarily these attributes can be summed up along the lines of active learning and a active learning contains or encompasses areas like learner centric courses uh, social learning um, we try to see students as knowledge producers and try to develop courses where the students can actually produce the material we work now in an age of information abundance as opposed to information scarcity when the the lecture model was first set up there's a stress on communication and collaboration um, from faculty to students and among, stu and among students. Um, and, and all this can be summed up in the um, theory of constructivism. And this is something that, that's not new. Um, people who are working in, in primary education have, have tried to create learning spaces and learning opportunities on, on these theories for a long time now higher education is, is just catching up. All right, so what does all this have to do with Blackboard, what, what we're really here to talk about? So again, we see Blackboard as an opportunity for conversations. And these conversations can go across a, a number of domains. Um, one, one domain is that um, we work with with faculty um, in, in workshops. And here I have, have a slide shot of a workshop we, we did in DECAL. Um, and this was a, a workshop on best practice, best learning design practices, where we tried to work with the faculty to develop some modules in their Blackboard courses that follow some basic learning design principles. Um, here that there, there's modules and that each module that's covered um, follows a, a, a period of time, so here it's week two, and that there, there's learning objectives for the modules, um, that there's activities associated with the learning objectives. So he, here's some very quick and basic dirty learning design best practices that we try to work hands on with faculty so that their courses can be developed in, in this way. Therefore, the, the tool, Blackboard tool, might actually change how their courses are designed um, moving towards more of more of this model. Um, some other ways that, that we try to 
work with uh, faculty are we do a lot of training workshops. Now these these training workshops have traditionally been about the tools, but we now try to make them about about what are the the teaching goals and then try to use the tools to support that. So here we have a workshop of common mistakes um, that people make in Blackboard, which, which I'll actually be, be giving today. Um, so in, in this workshop, here's an example of the modules that we have um, common, common mistakes in putting together your course and common mistakes in running your course. Um, and whenever we give these workshops, we try to model best practices of um, how we, we actually d deliver the, the workshops in, in terms of trying to make the workshop as, as discussion-based as, as possible, as, as hands-on as possible, um, try to make it as little about us standing up in front of the room and talking at people, but try to make the workshops interactive, try to model good practices and learning design in the tools we use to um, give the materials, and, and hopefully that, that will filter through. Um, in, in this workshop, we use some rich media, uh, um, and that, that's one of the best, best learning practices to, um, to appeal to different learning styles and to, uh, to, to try to get people emotionally involved in the learning. So in, in trying to do the workshop, we'll put in some video and then we'll, we'll show people how to, how to do it, um, you know, the mechanics of doing it and, and have conversations about where this could work in their, their teaching. Um, some other ways that we try to get us further down the road of an of a active learning or learner-centric model is that we try to model tools in, in our own work that, that we think can really help. So, so blogs and wikis and Blackboard courses are, are great ways to um, to bring the students into the into the courses and give them more control. In, in our own work, we try to use these tools. So here's an example of our Blackboard support wiki that we use. We use it with our students. Um, so we try to use the tools as much as we can so we get very comfortable with them. So when we work with um, faculty, we can talk about the tools and talk about their limitations and shortcomings as well as their advantages. Um, here is, we've been moving towards a, a self-help model as much as possible, and here's a screenshot of um, the screencasts that, that we have available. We make a lot of screencasts, either one-offs or, or more general, um, and in, in doing so, we think faculty can learn just in time, but, but we also have a goal of whenever we, we, we talk to faculty, trying to get them to see the advantages of, say, using a tool like this to record materials, uh, record lectures. And we've even had success of getting some courses to, to push these tools out to students. So students are recording voiceover presentations and, and putting them, them in the courses. And, and that, that's worked out quite well. The new free tools, Web 2.0 tools that have helped that. Um, what else do we do? We have a lot of one-on-one -on -one meetings. We, we spend a lot of time um, we encourage our, our faculty to come and, and work with us uh, on the courses. We, we, we'd like to get them early as possible to talk about their goals and objectives for the course and, and to work on course design, but we, we get them on all instances. So they might come in to talk to us about how to use the, the assignment manager, and we'll use it as an opportunity to look at their course and, and have, a, have a discussion about what their goals are and what are some of the tools that we might be able to, to use. Um, and that's been very successful. Um, some other tools that we have are, are the Venture Fund, which has proved um, a really, really good, good tool in getting faculty some resources. But what, what really happens is we build relationships with them over the longer term um, to help develop th their courses, um, either using Blackboard as well as, as the, the, the classroom to a more learning learner centric model. And the Venture Fund has, has a lot of different ways that that, that can be done. Um, other ideas we have are, are to re-bring out the, the newsletter um, to try to talk about what's going on in Blackboard and other opportunities to start conversations about teaching and learning. Um, we, we have a blog and I've talked about trying to extend that and find other kind of Web 2.0 conversational ways that we can um, get the message out. Um, and here, I mean, it's really key that, that we work to, to build relationships. We know that learning is social, so we spend a lot of time trying to spend time and have just talks with faculty, whether it be one-on-ones in their office or, or going to, to talks around campus where people are talking about learning or, their, or within their, their disciplines. And, and as we build up those relationships, people feel more comfortable coming to talk to us about what they want to do. And maybe there, there's a tool, a technology, um, often centered around Blackboard. Blackboard might be the starting place where they can do what, what they want to do. 
um, new projects like, like lecture capture. We think that these might be great opportunities not only to very quickly increase um, the amount of learning that students can have because they won't have to write everything down, they can pay more attention to their thinking in the course, but bringing in lecture capture systems will be 